<laughs> well, now let's talk about Sydney's light rail. Mm. Um, I, I never could understand why it was there in the in the first place. I've sort of come to the realisation it's something about the feds wanting to do an infrastructure a- asset recycling deals. It had to be done by 2019, and therefore the New South Wales government just found, just took something off the off the shelf that was going to be ready by then and cost about the same amount as it, as they got from their selling off their um, you know Macquarie Generation Liddell and. Yeah. Bayswater power stations. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I've heard that too. I don't know, I don't know that in detail what's gone on. What I do know is there is um, an almost religious uh, support for what they call light rail. Mm. Light rail is the answer to everything. Yeah, it's like eco tourism. <laughs> it know. used to be called trams. Yeah, why them... is light rail more politically correct? Yeah, God knows. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Um, but light rail is it. You know, light rail is everything. Um, the fact is, it's it's public transport. We had public transport going up and down George Street. Yes, and it's called buses. Yeah, and they were flexible, and they could stop and and go where they needed to, and uh, they could change their route if they needed to. They could put more on or take them off if they didn't need them. And uh, we won't be able to do any of that with the damn trams. We won't be able to do any of that. Now, funny thing is, three years ago, I wrote a column for the Daily Telegraph on this issue, exactly this issue. And I said, almost it's three years ago in June that it appeared, I said, this will end in tears. <laughs> we will, it will take a lot longer than we think, and it will cost a lot more than we said. And I used the example of Edinburgh in Scotland as the example. It... Uh, their light rail jammed up the city. It sent businesses broke, uh, depressed businesses in the in the main streets where where it was being built. It took three years longer than it was meant to take, and it ended up taking seven years. And it became oh. a, an absolute dirty word in Edinburgh. And I and I wrote in in my column three years ago. I bet you it ends up the same way. Look where we How are. How prescient. If only Gladys Berejiklian had listened to you. Well, she, you she was see, the transport minister you, then. You're saying everybody listened to me on drugs, but they don't listen to me on transport. What well, a failure I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. It's all wrong. It's yes. all gone back to front. Yeah. But, but why didn't they listen? I mean, why? It, it, it sort of was obvious um, mm. that, that it wasn't going to work, that no one wanted it in the first place. It was a waste of $1.5 billion. Now it's going to cost more like $2.5 billion. Yeah. And, and the Spanish subcontractors are now suing the government government because you know and they're on a go slow and etc it's mm. it's a nightmare it's a mess um one of the reasons that i was confident it would be messy though is because it's a government project which the <laughs> private sector could do yes I, I just couldn't see any point in doing it do you remember the uh the monorail yes um it you can argue whether it w- was a good idea or not but it was built on time on budget and with no taxpayers money and it ran quite efficiently. Mm. Um, the fact is I don't think it went to the right places. And, and, uh, well, neither the does the one up George Street. No, so, well, and, right. and we only just ripped down the monorail, so that's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then, so what do you think, looking ahead, what do you think will happen? I mean, will we end up ripping this one out as well? Well, if they just leave it just just the network that they're talking about, it'll be a white elephant, it'll, it'll do nothing. Um, it's, it's, if they're going to have a tram system, and there are some European cities that have tram systems that work, and of course Melbourne's tram system is generally regarded as pretty good, it would have to be expanded by a factor of 10 at least to make it useful. Um, if, if, you, if you have them going all over the place in, in a real network, people get to know their, their networks and it's easy to hop on, hop off and so forth, then they can be good. But frankly, I think they have to be very good before there'll be an improvement on buses. Mm. But, you know, buses are pretty good. And um, uh, I think the Sydney bus network is, um, uh, is, you know, not something you'd want to rip up and throw away at all. Well, and the people who live in Kingsford, where the light rail will go to, of course, they now are going to have to get off a bus and onto a tram, you know, mm. where they used to have a wonderful express trip into town. The other thing is that George Street and the city has now been split in two and George Street is supposed to be this, you know, mythical pedestrian boulevard with everyone, you know, strolling around happily in the sunshine. Mm. In fact, every pedestrian boulevard in the world, what happens to them at the moment? They get bollarded because they're, oh, yes. of course, yeah. they're terrorist, they're terrorist targets. Problems. Yeah, that's right. So imagine yeah. building that now in this yeah. current environment. Yeah, no, that's right. Well, I mean, there, there, you could argue that um, 
Pitt Street Mall you know, serves a useful purpose in terms of people wandering around. But um, is that is that sufficient reason to say, oh, we can do another one, that George Street's going to be like that? If there's a tram going up and down you know, every few minutes and it can bowl you over and they're very heavy and very big, if you get in the way of one of them, there's not much of you left over if they run over you. Does uh, you know? Are we really going to walk up and down and uh, and say, "Oh, isn't this lovely?" Like we do in in um, Pitt Street Mall. I, I have I have my doubts. Me too. I have my doubts. No, it was out. And it was the longest street in Sydney, and it was yeah, a useful thoroughfare, useful. and it took twenty five percent of the traffic. Absolutely. All that is going, had going to be squashed onto the rest of the city. Yep. Now, look. Before we go, I just mm. wanted to quickly ask you what what do you pick up as the atmosphere with the government? I mean, from from the outside, there seems to be a lot of disunity. However, is is business going along pretty well as far as you're seeing? Yeah, uh, so the, the Senate, well, the Parliament has been in recess now for a couple of weeks, but um, uh, my impression is that uh, they, are, they are just getting on with it. Um, they often shake their heads at the sort of the noise going on around them, um, at the interpretations of, of what's going on. For instance, the Monash Forum... And their and their focus on energy prices um, has been interpreted as a leadership issue. Mm. Uh, I don't see that. Maybe there are some in it who see it as a leadership issue, but I hear no interest in a change of leader in in the Liberal Party. There's no heir apparent. They are as jumpy as can be about uh, about replicating the Rudd Gillard mm. Rudd story. Mm. Um, I, I don't see it. I, I you know I don't hear any anything to confirm that. Craig Kelly, who is the most vocal of the Monash Forum, for example, is absolutely genuine about electricity prices. Mm, Now, I happen to think that unless the Liberals offer a realistic um, pathway to lower electricity prices, and the energy is not going to do it, um, unless they actually say, here is how we're going to lower electric prices, prices," the electorate will remain as grumpy as can be with Mm. them I, and I then think it will come down to a, a, a contest between Liberals and Labor about personal tax cuts. Mm. You can pretty much guarantee there'll be personal tax cuts in the budget. Labor, I think, is is uh, holding back their personal tax cuts until after the budget. But they will probably say, we can offer you bigger ones mm. because we're not going with the company tax cuts. Mm. And not only that, we're going to jack up taxes on capital Everything gains else. and superannuation, you know, all, all the rest. Super, all the other stuff. So they'll say, well, we, we can give you bigger tax cuts than the Liberals can. I, I don't think the Liberals are ready for it. Very interesting. Well, thank you, David Lionhelm, for your insights. And thanks for joining us in the studio. That's Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm. Now-